Hi an academy my name is Pramika and from this course onwards we'll be beginning with uh, cytology or cell biology now if you must have followed my previous course that was about neat ug i had stated i had mentioned somewhere that um, there are certain topics which are more important from the competitive point of view and cell biology was one of those so i decided i should do this course to to get rid of all those doubts that you might have and uh, this course is also suitable for people who are pursuing for the bachelors in biology in zoology or botany because these informations they are uh, very good from the university point of view as well so in this lesson we'll be doing about a general gist of what a cell is and uh, from the next lesson onwards we'll start doing the structure and function of each and every organelle so getting started we have what is a cell a cell is a basic building block of all living things the human body is composed of trillions of cells so obviously as a thing a substance is made up of atoms the same way our living body is composed of cells so uh, they provide structure for the body take in nutrients from food convert those nutrients into energy and carry out specialized functions cells also contain the body's hereditary material and can make copies of themselves so these are basically all the physiologic uh, processes that take place inside the body and cells are the smallest entities that take part in it cells have many parts each with a different function some of these parts called the organelles are specialized structures that perform certain tasks within the cell human cells contain the following major parts so these major parts we're going to be beginning with in the next chapter next lesson a cell is the basic unit of life as we know it it is the smallest unit capable of independent reproduction so this is an important point that you need to um, remember it is capable of independent reproduction so all the processes such as meiosis and mitosis they all take place in cells and not complete uh, beings right so robert hooke suggested the name cell in 1665 from the latin cella meaning storeroom or chamber after using a very early microscope to look at a piece of cork now let's talk about the cell theory the cell theory will help us to analyze what a cell is in a more of a deeper detail a theory in science world is an idea which is supported by many tests that have been repeated over and over to prove the same result so that's what a theory is it's it's an idea it's what a scientist thinks and then they perform certain tests to support what they think so in this case the cell theory is a collection of ideas and conclusions from many different scientists over time that describe cells and how cells operate so we know what a cell is it's a basic building block of life and now we we need to know how do they operate uh, what we know about cells has uh, continuously evolved over time as new technologies have emerged and new information has been collected by scientists so popular knowledge throughout history such that cells can grow spontaneously has been disproved and cell theory has been revised to reflect the new information so we're going to do what uh, the cell theory is the cell theory tells us three important things about cells uh, all I'm sorry. Uh, okay, all the living things are made up of cells. So this is a very, very important point. All the living uh, things are made up of cells, from the smallest unicellular organism to to mammals, to the biggest of uh, animals in the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom, uh, the highest possible plants. They are all composed of cells. Okay, a cell is. is the smallest unit in a living thing all the cells come from other cells this this little statement can also be modified as all the cells come from pre existing cells that means pre existing cells divide to give rise to new cells let's look at these in more of a deeper detail living things can be very simple such as an amoeba shown below which is made up of just one cell so amoeba obviously you know it's an irregular uh, entity which is made up of just one cell within the single cell the amoeba are the structures that allow nutrients and materials to enter and exit the cell reproduction to happen and the occurrence of energy to be used for and growth and response to the environment so all these functions are supported by certain structures inside the cell larger organisms such as a dog or a tomato plant are also made up of cells you should take a small tissue sample and place it under a microscope to see the actual cell within a larger living thing so if you want to do this uh, at school you can take a piece of onion and you scrape the purple lining of an onion and watch it under a microscope you will be easily able to see millions of cells 
larger organisms such as a dog or a tomato plant are also made up of cells we already did that so uh, you can observe all these uh, cells under a microscope and that is very easy to observe you can also ask your teachers to help you so finally cells reproduce to form new cells this is how organisms reproduce and grow for example cells are constantly being replenished in our skin to replace older cells and new cells are produced as young babies grow in a mother's womb so we already did reproduction so how does a complete organism is formed it is because the cells keep on dividing they specialize they differentiate and that is how a complete organism is um, is formed inside the mother's womb so now we're going to do the types of the cells there are two types mainly you must have heard these names the pre the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes the prokaryotes uh, the word comes from an old greek pro means before karyon means not or kernel referring to the cell nucleus and which is a suffix is otos and oats and also spelled as prokaryotes are organisms without a cell nucleus or a karyon or any other membrane bound organelle mostly are unicellular but some prokaryotes are multicellular as well so basically it does not have a well defined nucleus it has a primitive type of a nucleus and uh, there are a number of differences that are between uh, the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell we're going to do them in the next slide but you just need to know that prokaryotes do not have well defined uh, nucleus and they do not have membrane bound organelles as well uh eukaryotes are organisms whose cells are organized into complex structures by internal membranes and a cytoskeleton the most characteristic membrane bound structure in nucleus so of course here we did that the nucleus is primitive here we have a well defined nucleus this feature gives into the name it's also spelled as eukaryote which comes from the greek meaning good or true and uh, karyon which means referring to the nucleus in animals fungi protists are all eukaryotes because they have a well defined nucleus all the organelles are membrane bound and by this term membrane bound i mean that they have a well defined membrane as well okay this membrane we are actually going to do this in the next lesson which is about the plasma membrane we will will study what the membrane bound thing actually means so this is the basic difference between a prokaryote and and a eukaryote so uh, moving on we have the differences i would uh, kindly request you to turn your screens vertically so that uh, i can tell you starting out with prokaryotes we have the circular dna and in eukaryotes we have a linear dna so because in prokaryotes we have we do not have a well defined nucleus the circular dna is actually present in the cytosol that means in the outer cytoplasm whereas in eukaryotes we have a linear dna which is present inside the nucleus okay in prokaryotes we do not have any organelles and in eukaryotes we have several membrane bound organelles then a nucleoid is uh, not a membrane bound this is the the nucleus of a prokaryotic cell is basically termed as a nucleoid and of a eukaryotic cell is um, termed as a nucleus of course so in prokaryotes we have single chromosomes and in eukaryotes we have several chromosomes you know the number of chromosomes in a human body right so uh in prokaryotes plasma membrane typically lacks receptors plasma membrane with receptors for steroids and carbohydrates are present in eukaryotes so we are going to study the structure in our next lesson as well so you will be clear with this idea chemically complex cell wall may contain peptidoglycan whereas in eukaryotes chemically simple cell walls are present which is made of cellulose in plants and chitin in fungi and cell wall is altogether absent in um animal cells then we have a uh, dna transcription and mrna translation occurs simultaneously in cytosol and then here we have dna transcription in nucleus and mrna translation in cytosol so these are the differences between uh, the the positions where the dna transcription and mrna transcription takes place in the two cells flagellum if present is simple and it is built from true proteins and in eukaryotes flagellum is if present it is complex and it's built from microtubules so we are also going to do the structures of the flagellum um, which is composed of the micro 
paper tubules in our later lessons and uh, that's how you'll be clear about it so uh, in prokaryotes they may have pili and fimbriae and uh, in eukaryotes they may have cilia then in haploid genome that means only one copy of each gene is present in prokaryotes whereas in eukaryotes it's a diploid genome so uh, you prokaryotes may also have plasmids whereas in eukaryotes plasmid dna is not common okay then uh, in prokaryotes the genome is very compact and very little repetitive dna is present whereas in eukaryotes there are large amounts of non coding and repetitive dna so uh, they may have a glycocalyx cover the prokaryotes whereas glycocalyx is, is only present if cell wall is absent okay in uh, prokaryotes very small ribosomes are present whereas in eukaryotes large ribosomes are present in the cytosol um in prokaryotes no histones are present in the chromosome whereas in eukaryotes the dna wounds around the histone we know around every histone pro uh, protein the dna is wrapped around so uh, the prokaryotes also lack uh, cytoskeleton whereas eukaryotes do have cytoskeleton which is composed of actin and microtubules then uh, mycologenous capsule is present in prokaryotes whereas it is absent in eukaryotes the cell size is stated which is 0.5 to 100 micrometer and here it is uh, from 10 to 150 micrometer then prokaryotes they always undergo asexual reproduction or binary fission whereas in eukaryotes sexual reproduction takes place such as meiosis and mitosis we're going to do meiosis and mitosis in our later chapters these are very very important topics and i make sure i'm going to include this uh, moving on we have uh, a diagram of the eukaryotic cell the plant cell and the animal cell so in the plant cell we can see the golgi complex right here we can see the chloroplast now th there are certain structures which are uh, which are only in the plant cells and only in the animal cells so in the plant cells we also find chloroplast because obviously plant cells are photosynthetic they are autotrophic so we have chloroplasts here the cytoskeleton can be seen we have the endoplasmic reticulum around the nucleus the nucleus can be seen here the cell wall is also uh, present in the plant cell we have the cell membrane right in the center we have the cytoplasm here the mitochondrion in blue can be seen then the ribosomes are also present and there's a large central vacuole which holds water in a plant cell basically anatomy of an animal cell so can you see uh, the cell membrane is uh, clearly visible we have the nucleus here then we have a nucleolus right in the center you have a small vacuole to store some reserve food we have the lysosomes which are so side bags of a cell we're going to do in more to more detail then we have the cytoplasm mitochondrion is visible golgi complex is also there and then we also have the endoplasmic reticulum now this one is a prokaryotic cell and as you can see this is such a simplified figure there are such less structures as compared to the 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 eukaryotes so we have a cell membrane we have a cell wall in some uh, cells we also have a capsule we also said that we have some fimbriae which are minute projections that come out of the cell wall then we have certain ribosomes the chromosome or the dna is uh, located right here we also have the nucleoid region and then a flagellum is also present which is basically made of proteins and not microtubules so that was a general idea of what a cell is what were the different types of cells the cell theory i hope i made myself clear in this lesson from the next lesson onwards we're going to start out with the major uh, organelles which are found in the cells so uh, please follow me recommend this lesson to your friends so that they may come to know about this and rate and review this course thank you for watching